right guys welcome back to the channel today we're gonna talk about well proverbs chapter 28 verses 1 the wicked flee though no one pursues but the righteous are as bold as a lion now guys what does that mean to you all right so it can mean one of two things well it can mean one is the wicked flee when no one pursues and two well the righteous are as bold as a lion so let's go ahead and break it down. Uh, this, actually, this lesson actually breaks it up pretty well. Uh, we're actually going to go over it. It's the story of David and Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses... Well, we're just going to read the whole thing, guys. Give you the background. Guys, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you guys like this video, if I bring any value, just go ahead and smash that like button and hit the, hit the subscribe button. That way you guys are notified every time we make new videos, make new content, and well... Teach you guys about game changers and how to be, well, your own banker. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, look, you guys see I got a new mic. You guys are complaining about the mic. Hey, it is what it is. I was using AirPods, but they aren't that great. I don't know why the mic looks like up here, but I'm looking at you guys, guys. So just keep that in mind. So now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Sukkot in Judah. They pitched camp at uh, well, anyways, we'll, we'll just give a, a, a summary. So basically, the Philistines were ready to battle the uh, battle Jerusalem in war. They had a champion named Goliath. He was from Gath. He came out from the Philistine camp. He was six cubits and a span. If you guys don't know what that means, this guy was literally about 10 feet tall. Like, legit 10 feet. Like, dude, how did you get 10 feet tall? Get me on your meal plan. <laughs> guys, I actually wanted to be seven foot six. I got blessed with six foot five and I got to play basketball. That's why I got all these jerseys because basketball is fun. I love basketball. Guys, if you don't have a sport or if you don't have a hobby, get a hobby. You need one, especially in times like this because when you ain't busy, when you ain't doing something good, you are going to be doing the wrong thing. Trust me, guys. Keep busy. Stay out of trouble. So let's go and get into it. So. He had a bronze helmet on his head, wore a coat of scale or coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5000 shekels. 5000 shekels is nuts, guys. If you don't know how much that is, that's 125 pounds. So, this guy, he's literally carrying his mom on his back while he's fighting. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin with or and a bronze javelin on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod. The iron point, just the point, weighed 600 shekels. That's 15 pounds. So, guys, have you ever thrown, like, one of those uh, shot put balls? Those things are, like, nuts. Like, you can't just throw it like a football. You got to, like, push it like a shot put. This guy is just holding it on the end of his spear, and he's just like, imagine this. Take a bamboo stick, put a bowling ball on, or put two bowling balls on the end of it, See how that's going to work out for you. Yeah, it doesn't work out so hot. Anyways, so side note, that's this guy's massive. So now you kind of are like, wow, well, where's the roaring lion coming to play? Because this guy's a beast. I would not want to go up against him. Guys, this is a true story too. So this is like legit. So Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he's able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. Basically, he's like, bro, send someone to come attack me. And if they attack me and kill me, well, you can take over our kingdom. But if you can't, if all of your guys can't beat me, sorry, bro. I'm going to still like rule you guys and spit on you and beat you up. So this is what happened. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul, the kingdom of Jerusalem, or the kingdom of Jerusalem, or king of Jerusalem, I'm sorry. Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. How could you be terrified? They've got on your side. Are you kidding me? Fear no one but the Lord. Now David was the son of Jesse. Or, well, are you afraid he named Jesse? Well, that's what it says here. But anyways, so Jesse had eight sons. Saul's time, he was very old. So which means he's old in age. So Jesse's three oldest son. Sons had followed Saul to the war. The first one was Elab, Abinab, and Shammah. I probably fudged them so bad, so we're going to say um, Curly, Larry, and Mo. But it's not really Curly, Larry, and Mo, but we're going to call them that. The three oldest followed Saul. But David went back and forth from Saul to tend 
his father's sheep at Jerusalem or at Bethlehem because, well, David got stuff done. He knew it needed to get done. So now Jesse said to his son David, take this epitaph of, it's basically an amount of roasted grain and it, just an allotment of food. So anyways, he was doing that. He brought it to Saul and he, he took him along with the cheeses to the commander. And then he saw this guy, um, Goliath. Well, he didn't see him yet, but he was out there and he heard uh, Goliath shouting at them. It said, now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man had been coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. So he will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. Guys, if someone told me that here, I'd be like, hands down, I'm on deck. I'm going out there. Let's get it done. I'm done herding these sheep and uh, fighting off the wolves and throwing pickaxes or canes at them. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> they, they repeated to him what they had been told. This is what will be done to the man who kills him. So when Elab, David's oldest brother, Heard him speaking with the man, he burned with anger and asked, Why do you come down here, bro? David, I can take care of this. I'm like the older brother and like, who cares about you, bro? Like, come on, bro. You're, you're like ruining it for me. I can do all this. I mean, dude, you left the sheep alone. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? I mean, just like harping on him, like destroying him. And it's just like, dude, calm down. He's trying to like save the kingdom and... Uh, who cares about the sheep? The sheep will be there when you get back. Uh, so, can't, and so David says, or so David says, now what have I done? Can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter, and the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him because he was like, bro, this guy actually might be able to do something. So David said to Saul. Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. So he's like, bro, I'm like a little pipsqueak midget hobbit guy. And I'll go take down this massive gorilla Goliath because I can do it. <laughs> no, he didn't say I could do it. He said God will do it. That's the point, guys. God will fight your battles. If you guys aren't winning battles... It's because you're fighting it with the wrong weapon and the wrong armor. God is the armor. God is the weapon. Guys, I encourage you to get in the Word. Read about it. Well, let's continue this story. But also, guys, um, I forgot to uh, say what we're talking about, but we're, we're going to title this series. This is Lesson 2. We're going to be doing these each and every Sunday. This is our quarantine chapel. Yeah, Quarantine Chapel. That sounds good, right? Quarantine Chapel Lesson 2. Guys, have faith. Have hope like a roaring lion. That sounds pretty good. I like that. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. So he went out. So now David and Saul are just like talking with each other. And David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came out, and carried off the sheep from the flock, I went after them. I struck them, pulled it straight out of their mouth, and saved the sheep. Dude, this guy's a beast. This guy's only like five foot or five foot six. He's like a little midget, but he's like, he's like one of those guys you don't want to mess around with. He's like Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> that guy's short, but <laughs> you don't want to get on his, you don't want to get on his bad side or his good side, because he might just play punches with you and just like put you in a coma but <laughs> that's side note so Saul said to David go and the Lord be with you so Saul dressed David in his own tunic and what his tunic was was a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head so this guy's like loaded down it's like 100 200 pounds this is like twice his size so this guy's trying to carry <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to carry body weight so it's like dude I can't do this are you kidding so he says, I cannot go in these, bro. He said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. I can't wear this stuff. Let me just wear like my regular cloak I wear with my sheep because my sheep don't do nothing. So he took them. He took, the, he took them off. And he took his staff in his hand. And he's like, yeah, this is my stuff. This is my jams. And he took five smooth stones from the stream. He put them in a pouch. Like, bro, 
let me just put my gumballs in this pouch because this is what I do. You know, when I get hungry, I just eat some gum. Yeah, okay. With a sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. I mean, Goliath's looking at this guy. He's like, bro, really? Are you going to throw rocks at me? Do you not see my size? Do you not see my spear? Put two bowling balls on a bamboo stick and see how it feels. Look, I can just hold it like nothing. Anyways, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword, spear, and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut your head off. Dude, you just said, bro, I'm going to take you down and cut your head off. And Goliath's thinking in his head like, I'm going to destroy you. I mean, I, I mean, dude, these are these are fighting words right here. So it's like, wow, what's going to happen? So this very day, I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not sword or spear that the Lord saves, but the battle is the Lord's. And he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistines moved closer, or as the Philistine moved clo- closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Guys, this guy wasn't scared. He was like, Oh, you coming at me? All right, I'm going to come at you faster because that's what I'm going to do. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he took it, boom, he slung it, struck him right in the forehead. The stone sank into it, fell face down on the ground. This guy dead with a rock, with a pebble. Guys, it's not the pebble. That's the whole point. The pebble did nothing. It was God who took him down. If you guys are trying to imagine how big this guy was, just think about, think about, (laughs) think about the strength of Bruce Lee. Think about the height of uh, Shaq. Think about the size of Shaq. Think about the size of a sumo wrestler. I mean, this guy, this guy's going to war carrying his mom on his back. And it's like lightweight for him. Because, dude, it's lightweight. Okay, anyway, so let's get back into the story. This guy's massive. So David trumped over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck the Philistine down and killed him. How did he even pick up the sword? He probably was just like, oof. Nah, guys, this guy killed a lion and a bear. He, he gets it done. We're, we're, we're just messing with you. So when the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines to the entrance of Gath. Their dead were strewn among the Sarahim, rode to Gath and Ekron. When the Israelites returned from chasing the Philistines, they plundered the camp. Look, guys, bro, it's done. Goliath, non-existent, dead. Guys, this guy was massive. How in the world do you take him down? And you took him down with a little rock. (laughs) I mean, are you kidding me? That's like, that's like, okay, so here's the relation. That's like saying a bullet, you shoot a bullet at a tank and it just blows up. That's the relation we're having. A human just shoots a bullet at a tank and it blows up. Like just a regular pistol. That's the relation we have with David and Goliath. If you guys ever hear the story of David and Goliath, strongly recommend reading Samuel chapter 17, or Samuel chapter 17, just read through it guys, short read, or you just watch this video and I'll read it to you. So the king said, find out whose son this young man is. So now it's like, bro, now David's got to end with what he said he was going to do. David took the Philistine's head, literally like, bro, I got your head, so you're dead. He took his head brought it to Jerusalem. He put the Philistines' weapons in his own tent. So now as Saul watched David going out to meet the Philistine, he said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is that young man? Abner replied, as surely as you live, your majesty, I don't know, because this guy is like a no-name I don't even know. The king said, find out whose son that young man is. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him, and brought him before Saul. And David was holding the Philistine's head. Whose son are you, young man? Saul asked. David said, 
I am the son of your servant Jesse of Bethlehem. <laughs> Saul's looking at him like, and who are you? And you just saved our kingdom? Well, you can have everything now. Never pay taxes again. In fact, actually, um, if you guys don't know the whole story, David actually secedes Saul as king. Um, he is named uh, man after God's own heart. But anyways, we'll talk about more stories about that. But that's, that's a quick story, guys, uh, of David and Goliath. If you guys never heard about David and Goliath, well, you just heard about it, bro. Guys, if you're still st tuning in to this point, you know what you guys are? You guys are as bold as a lion. Guys, look, Proverbs chapter 28, verses 1. Be bold as a lion, guys. The righteous are bold as a lion. Go out there, be as bold as a lion. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If this content brought any value to you whatsoever, or if it didn't bring any value at all and you just didn't like it, that's fine. Press that dislike button. Go out there, guys. Just, just try this. Go out there one week. Pray to God. Just bless or praise Him. Just watch the blessings come in. Guys, He blesses those who follow Him. Look, the wicked flee that no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We're going to leave you guys with that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And again, if you guys like this content, smash that like button. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And guys, we talk about cryptocurrencies here every day. We talk about wisdom one-liners every day. And if you guys are looking for a home for rent, we got homes for rent too. Um, guys, thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you in the next one. And we'll probably see you at, what is it called, guys? Go ahead. Hit it. Hit it. Quarantine Chapel. See you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell notification. That way you guys can be ahead of the game every time we make a new video. If you guys are new to cryptocurrency, don't know where to get started, don't know what to invest in, well, participate in the triple threat. The first thing, set up a Celsius account. This is for your savings. This is where you're going to store your cryptocurrency and you can earn interest. It can be up to 5%, 6%, 10%, and they, they even have some as high as 17%. Here's a referral link. Use this referral link in order to get 20 bucks in free Bitcoin. Part two of the triple threat is to get a crypto dot com crypto.com account is one of the best places especially for a beginner to buy cryptocurrencies uh or well smaller altcoins so now you have a savings account now you need to get a cryptocurrency wallet that allows you to buy those smaller altcoins like your engine coin your raving coin just like smaller alt so you guys can participate in those um, big plays my referral code is down here if you use this you'll get 25 bucks free And the next one is Voyager. Voyager is awesome. There's a list of different cryptocurrencies you can use. What I like about Voyager in particular is you can actually make your next level up in buying cryptocurrencies. You can actually buy Bitcoin with a limit order. So you just hit buy Bitcoin, hit limit, and you type in how much you want. Boom, you're off to the races. So you don't have to watch it and make sure it's a good buy. -in. Here's a referral code you guys can use. To get some free cryptocurrency this will allow you to get $25 for free can't beat free and then obviously this is just a fun one so you can get free cryptocurrency is going on Lolly. you get a daily stack all you do is you tap the treasure chest and you get free sats and it's literally free one of the days I literally got um, 20 bucks in free Bitcoin look 101,000 sats pretty cool